Hello, everybody. I suggest that we start. Yeah, we have a few people here. Um, and I know there are, well, there were several people interested with the, uh, well, I think all it has to do with the, the, the time framing. Yeah. Plus also we told to all the people who were interested that we will record uh, this webinar. Yeah. And that afterwards we will also send the link to those who asked for. Yeah. Also for you, hey, you are here present. Um, if you want to see later uh, again what we talked about, yeah, uh, feel free. Yeah, we will put it on our uh, inclusion platform uh, where uh, this webinar also will be uh, available. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, welcome, welcome here uh, on the webinar from Path from uh, Path uh, to Inclusion. Yeah, and today we are going to talk about tips and tricks in setting up and developing activities for young people with. Um, special needs. Yeah, my name is Ronald. Yeah, I'm from Belgium, um, and basically, I am. Uh, I have a small organization, Donot. Yeah, which is a small training organization uh, that is working on yeah, different kinds of training courses for youth workers. We do it in our free time, outdoor education, experiential learning, etc. Yeah, and we are involved in the Path to Inclusion project. Uh, which is an yeah and kind of a strategic partnerships to the Erasmus Plus program. Maybe some of you already know this. Yeah, uh, where we work or where we have been working almost two years long together around accessibility for young people with special needs. Yeah, uh, to set up activities with uh, mixed groups. Yeah, um, since we are just with a few people. Yeah, um, maybe it's nice that you just shortly. Uh, introduce yourself, where you're coming from, yeah, and also what is your interest uh, yeah, to take part today in this uh, short presentation. And since we are with not so many, we also can have a, a short or nice uh, discussion. Yeah, I see in my top corner, Rosanna. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Rosanna. Uh -huh. I'm from South of Italy. Precisely okay. Naples, near Naples. And basically, I study English and Chinese at University of Naples. Mm -hmm. I've been studying English for several years, while Chinese for only three years. And basically, I am attending this video call because I'm interest, interested in how we can help uh, people with special needs to cooperate between themselves and also to um, have more self-confidence and more aw awareness of their um, of their person, of their value. Yeah, okay, thank you. Elif. Hi everyone, good morning. Uh, I'm Elif, um, I am from Turkey. Um, I actually represent uh, Turkey Youth Union Association, which is one of um, in this project. Uh, as the organization and personally, we have been you to sect um so here in um i also would like to hear from your team and um i would like to share mine and thank you okay thank you elif elif i think was it also with the others that uh, the voice came through very 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 difficult yeah, so maybe sometimes then it's good to switch off the camera because then connection uh, can go smoother. Anita. Yes, hello, I'm Anita from Norway. Uh, I'm a head of child and youth work in my municipality and I'm also running a small NGO called ECHO NGO. Uh, we are active in Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps and uh, host uh, young people with fewer opportunities and also 
in our Erasmus Plus project due to change, we uh, uh, always have participants mm -hmm. with uh, special needs. And I foster two girls in my house as well with special needs. So I'm, I'm working a lot with that. Uh, Echo and Joe also run a club, a youth club for a uh, uh, youngster with special needs. So, yeah. And I'm interesting to, to hear what others are doing and uh, experience and new ideas, how to make... Uh, First of all, our club and also our youth exchange more uh, adaptable and and for the people with special needs needs and also uh, how we can yeah train them for more active participation in uh, youth exchange so they can have their feel of managing to be a part of the youth exchange. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Anita. What have you? Good morning. I'm Ottavio. I'm from southern Italy. I study in Naples uh, at university. Uh, and I actually I'm I, I was curious about the high temps, and uh, that's mm -hmm. the that's why I decided to uh, collaborate with the uh, Explora with Lorenzo that suggests me to take part in the reunion. So I accept it because I, I, I'm curious about the, the high tab and about the problem around the, the, about this, so. Okay, thank you. Lorenzo. Yeah, good morning. I'm Lorenzo from uh, Gain Explorer organization. I'm the project manager of Viaggi Diffusi that works on uh, accessible tourism. After the COVID, we didn't uh, start uh, strongly again. We mm -hmm. will uh, go on. In the meantime, uh, yes, we, uh, we work together in this uh, project Path to Inclusion, and we uh, hope to increase for the future more um, projects and activities with Mixability Group. That's why uh, all this uh, project. Uh, we hope it's the first milestone of a longer. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. I see that Aline also arrived. Hello, Aline. Wait, we don't hear you. You're still on mute. Yes. Sorry, I'm not good with technologies. That was why I arrived late. So uh -huh. No problem. Um, so as I see you're presenting yourself and seeing the motivation, right? Of, just quick, uh, just quick, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm uh, Aline from Spain, and um, well, thanks to Lorenzo and uh, Viaggi Diffusi, discovered the uh, accessible tourism. Mm -hmm. So um, that was uh, my first step into uh, this uh, inclusivity world, and uh, the reason why I got interested in all of that. So thanks to them, I started to uh, to collaborate on this uh, on this path, and uh, that's the reason why I'm motivated to to continue to continue discovering how does it work. Okay, thank you. And Anna Angel, I think you are the last one. No. Hello, um, okay. I'm, I'm Angel, I think you can see me? Can you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Angel from uh, Digital as an organization, uh, Media Lab Toledo. I'm the digital partner of the project. Uh, um, well, uh, I don't know what to say, <laughs> sorry, uh, because now I'm recording the, all this webinar mm -hmm. for, need for upload and, and yeah. uploaded in, in this afternoon. So okay. very, very grateful for, yeah. um, for participating in this beautiful, really beautiful project. Okay, thank you, Angel. Um, well, yeah. Um, before we start, because I prepared a very nice uh, PowerPoint presentation, yeah, with some uh, content, yeah, about the topic and how to, uh, yeah, what we have to take in account uh, when we work 
with young people and mixed groups uh, where we have a mixed group of you know, uh, a group of youngsters together with a group of youngsters of special needs i would like to share you a very short video yeah um last year in uh, october we had a training course with our path uh, to inclusion project in uh, felice yeah, in Italy, and there we had, um, yeah, we had a lot of youth workers coming from all over Europe, yeah, from the, our five uh, participating organizations in here, which was Turkey, uh, Belgium, yeah, we also had Italy, of course, uh, people from Esplora here uh, present, um, Spain, and uh, Slovenia. Yeah, and at the end, um, we have uh, been interviewing a few of them, yeah, uh, and especially to check out and to ask what their experiences uh, are and were when they uh, were in groups, uh, when they were in group and they were facing difficulties because they didn't take their um, special need into account. Yeah, uh, it's a short three minute video, yeah, which I would like to share with you. Yeah, um, normally I will share and my connection is good. Yeah? Hopefully it comes in uh, at your place also correct. Um, if the uh, volume is a little bit too low, yeah, you have to, um, I know you have to adjust it a little bit on your own uh, computer or the um, laptop or whatever uh, um, thing you're working with. Yeah. So I will first share the video. Yeah. And just have a look as an introduction. But I don't know, maybe the middle school happens that uh, they wanted to play volleyball and they wanted that me play with my friends in volleyball and it was more than exclusion because it wasn't exclusion but it was a forced inclusion that doesn't work so I think that we have to think a lot about it because we have to do we can do a lot of stuff but arranged and thinkable for all so not a false uh, inclusion, but a real inclusion uh, fought for everyone mm -hmm. with work. It is when I was a child or back. I don't remember they wouldn't be adapted to me. Just I know when there were word games, I couldn't be involved. And I felt uh, isolated, excluded. And I didn't like it. And I felt like I'm not human. But now, of course, when I grew up and come here in this program, I really feel really good in the games I was included in. So really happy about it. And I had the possibility to play. So even if it was hard for me, but I enjoyed it so much. The most of the games that I played, uh, that I played in my at least last six years were not adapted. So it was very hard to me to be like included. Uh, if, if I didn't have my personal assistant with me to help me with like, I don't know, scissors, papers, uh, pants or putting down shoes or anything like, like that, yeah, it was hard for me, I, I didn't play it, so yeah. Um, I felt forced included. As I, as I think, because uh, everybody knows that something doesn't work uh, really good, mm -hmm. but you know, the convention uh, and uh, people that uh, doesn't work really good, but work clean uh, our consciousness, you know? Yeah, you can play with the others and we don't care about how it will go. Yeah. You play, but it's not... Uh, Comfortable for nobody actually. It's just uh, a show, but a false show. No, for me, death. It's we are a very isolated group. So because it's we don't have the same language. Uh, uh, like I experienced this way, mixed disabilities here. I never experienced before. I In Italy, uh, I was in the group with a deaf person, with a visually impaired person, uh, with a blind person. So yes, it was the first time for me being in a mixed ability group. 
it was a fun because uh, you don't know what. Okay, did everything came through? Just to check. Yeah. Um, as you could see, yeah, several uh, experiences of people. Yeah, those were three participants in our training course, of course, and the people who were speaking here. Yeah, they are very engaged. Yeah, in their work, they take a very active role. Yeah, in society, also in their organizations. So in a sense, yeah, they are very uh, also motivated yeah, and very challenged. Yeah, um, which is yeah mostly not the case when we work with our groups. Yeah, because there sometimes yeah it's very uh, difficult. Let's say yeah, uh, and it's the challenge of us as a youth worker. Yeah, of course to yeah to try to see to take into account yeah and of course also to adapt yeah the techniques that we know, especially when we have mixed groups. Yeah, um, I will share with you. Yeah, I will share my. Uh, PowerPoint of the explanation I would like to give to you. Yeah. Um, and as you see, yeah, um, important for us, yeah, or important for a youth worker is that when we work, yeah, with young people, um, we should provide guidance and support. Yeah? Basically, that's a bit the main task of a youth worker. Yeah, interaction, let people grow, give them support, challenge them. Yeah, uh, but when we work, yeah, with a mixed group, yeah, or especially with groups of people, yeah, where there are also people uh, or young people inside with disabilities, well, the first thing that we, uh, of course, have to do is to understand, yeah, uh, their needs, yeah, because sometimes it's very complex. Yeah, complex, how to deal with people who are in a wheelchair, how to deal with people who are visually impaired, especially if you are not used to it, or if you're new, yeah? for example, in your organization, when you have new people that are coming in, yeah, um, we always stand, yeah, uh, that, uh, yeah, we, we would like uh, to see them, yeah. Um, Important is yeah that we need, have to need uh, the right skills yeah um, so basically we say yeah you should have five basic skills more or less yeah as a youth worker the first one is we need to understand the youth with special needs yeah and understanding means sometimes yeah, that we have to look who's in our, yeah what uh, special needs are there is it something physical yeah? do people have some mental disabilities. Yeah, uh, but it also has to do with the psychological and social and emotional uh, behavior. Yeah, that can people bring into your group. Yeah, um, when we work with a lot of people, yeah, sometimes it also uh, means that there, are, yeah, some people they follow a kind of therapy. Yeah. Um, and people, especially for example, people who are in a wheelchair, yeah, uh, they tend, yeah, to be treated every several hours. Yeah, sometimes they have their personal assistant with them. Yeah, but these are things that you need to know in advance. Yeah, and that is not always easy, especially for example, hey, Anita, you were saying hey, when we uh, also do these international youth exchanges. Yeah, okay, this is some. Um, yeah, something already big, yeah, but it also can be on local level, yeah, when you know that people will be included in your organization yeah, or in an activity uh, when they have a, a special need, yeah. Another thing yeah, that we have to take in account, yeah, or, well, we should uh, be aware of it, yeah, is that we should create a positive and inclusive environment, yeah. We tend yeah, always yeah, to work with the group that we have. Yeah, and when you work with young people, small groups, big groups, yeah, important for young people is to be respected and to be accepted in the group to which you belong. Yeah, but you as a youth worker, yeah, you also have to work around this. Yeah, uh, you have to create a safe environment. Yeah, when people feel safe, yeah, they can express themselves 
freely. Yeah, they can express themselves and explain. Yeah, they show their emotions, and that is, as a youth worker, what we would like to reach. And we want to get into contact, yeah, to connect yeah, with the young people themselves, and through this, we create this emotional band. Yeah, uh, so that we can hear them. Yeah, they can express them. We can hear their voice, their feelings. Yeah, and use this when we set up an activity uh, or where, when we want to deal around a special topic, for example. Another one is to develop appropriate support strategies. As a youth worker, yeah, you need to know beforehand how will we communicate with them? Yeah, how will we find them? Uh, what do we have to do for this? Yeah, do we have our connections? Do we have our network? Yeah, uh, do we or are we in contact with parents? Yeah, sometimes hmm, you organize an activity and people come to you. Yeah, um, and yeah, people start to ask questions before they send their youngsters or their kids to your activity. Yeah, and here as a youth worker, you also need to know how to deal with that. Yeah. Um, a lot of young people or youth workers yeah who start to set up activities yeah for the target group and who don't have experience not from school yeah or not from their private life yeah, family friends who have a, a special need yeah uh, but they just have showing interest yeah to work with them because um, they want to do something with them it's not that easy yeah it's not that easy and here we always say preparation, yeah, that's the best. Yeah? Prepare yourself, talk with people, but also think about how will you uh, catch them? How will you uh, will uh, communicate with them? Yeah? This is also important, the, the psychosocial preparation. Yeah? You need to be prepared yeah, for yourself also yeah, to create an environment where people feel safe yeah, and physically and emotionally safe for everybody. Yeah. Mixed groups means physically and emotionally safe as a normal young person. Yeah. But there is also an extra effort that we have to do, especially in the beginning, if people don't know each other. Uh, when you have a young person, for example, sitting in a wheelchair who took, uh, who you convinced to come to your activity for the first time, yeah, uh, that you take this into account, uh, that you feel safe and prepared. Yeah. Um, important there is to be open, uh, open communication that we say between you, between the young people, between the staff. Uh, if you work for a big organization, for example, that also uh, tends to be uh, forgotten. And the last one here, is foster independence and self-advocacy. Yeah. What we would like, yeah, or what we always strive as a youth worker, is we would like yeah, that people can develop themselves. Yeah. They can develop them, they can grow, they get more self-confidence, yeah. uh, they won't take active uh, part in society, yeah. they want to take ownership of their own decisions. Yeah. Because in a lot of cases, yeah, People are sitting yeah, within their, how do you say, environment, safe environment, yeah, uh, parents, uh, social workers, yeah, uh, sometimes even separated in school. Yeah. Uh, while now you, for example, in Europe, you have a tendency to be more inclusive. Yeah? Also here in Belgium, for example, that young people yeah, also with a disability, we always at this point uh, to put them as long as possible yeah, in the normal uh, schools, uh, elementary schools, but also uh, um, college and education, etc. Yeah. But for that, yeah, you need very good support yeah, uh, and also understand the rights, yeah, the right and the responsibility, of course, you as a youth worker, yeah, but also that something, uh, something you can give yeah, to um, the young person itself also and finally that brings in okay because those are a bit the uh, basic skills yeah, you say but what do you have then to do yeah in order to develop yeah, or set up yeah, or adapt exercises games yeah, that you would like to play yeah, during your normal work or your activity or youth exchange when you have people with special needs in your group yeah 
Here, sometimes people, they start and they look and they think too far. Yeah? We always say, don't reinvent the wheel. Yeah? Don't reinvent the wheel. Think back about your childhood. Yeah? Think about the things you did when you were young and you were playing. Yeah, uh, about your favorite methods that you use in a normal context, yeah, with other people, yeah, and then try to modify them. And sometimes, yeah, you only have to make very small changes, yeah, in order to adapt your exercise, your game to the new group yeah, that you would like to play. Hmm. Here we are talking always about mixed groups, yeah, mixed groups, because this is also what we are trying to do in our project path to inclusion. Yeah? Include them, we as a group together. Yeah? The tendency yeah, in Europe, or from the past at least, yeah, in social work was, okay, we have to set up projects, we have to set up youth organizations for young people with special needs, but we put them all together and we build a whole youth house, youth club around that. Yeah? But in that way, yeah, we are still separating, still segregating them a little bit from our society. Now you see yeah, in Europe that there is a tendency also to include them all together. But that brings some new uh, insights with it yeah, and some new approaches. Um, because we are used to work and we are used to uh, set up activities and with your group of youngsters or teenagers. Yeah. Uh, but if we have then somebody included who shows interest to join, yeah, who has a special need, then sometimes we are blocked. Yeah, we are blocked because we don't know, or uh, as also in the video, uh, um, Andrea was saying, uh, he said, okay, I was in an activity, yeah, and we played the game, but it was an adapter to me uh, because like, then people from his class, they have no special need. Eh? They are not visually impaired yeah? and they just include him and he just had to follow, but that can cause a lot of friction. And he was even speaking about false inclusion. Yeah? So when you think about adapting yeah, and developing games, yeah, there are certain um, tips yeah, and tricks that we can give to you yeah, that you can take into account yeah, when you're considering, uh, let's say, when you want to change a game eh, or invent a game or develop a game. Eh? And basically there are 16 of them and I will go over with them. Eh? First of all, eh, think about methods appealing to different senses and abilities. Yeah? When we have people with different uh, disabilities and eh, with different special needs in our group, sometimes eh, you have to think about, okay, how can we approach this in a different way? For example, people who are visually impaired, yeah? Okay, they cannot see, yeah? Yeah, or they have a very bad sighting, yeah, but their other senses are much more developed, hearing, feeling, smelling, tasting, yeah, and sometimes yeah, in an exercise when you uh, change a method yeah, where people have to feel instead of watch, yeah, that already is something that can be very challenging, yeah, and also very um very touchy for the person eh, who to feel included, to feel be part, eh, because we take, uh, for example, the sense of smelling, the sense of touching again in our exercise. Yeah. The second one is don't leave anyone behind or out. Yeah, this sounds a bit strange. Yeah, um, but everybody has to be uh, included in the group. Yeah, so when we do a fun activity, see that it's fun, see that everybody can enjoy it, yeah? regardless if he, is a, uh, yeah, he has a disability, yes or no. Yeah? A game should be fun, yeah? and everybody would like to have a good time in your activity. Yeah? So it's a shame, for example, to have like 20 people playing and two people feeling left out because there was no interaction or there was no technique inside eh, when they were also included. Yeah. Tailor-made methods in a way that allows people to use and show their strength. Yeah. This is something what we think eh, is also important. Yeah. When we develop something, yeah, and we know that we have people with a special need in our group, we always start to think about the point of, okay, yeah, that person 
well, he cannot see or he cannot walk or it's very difficult to express himself because it has to do with sign language, yeah? But then we are focused on the negative thing, yeah? People can do a lot of things themselves, yeah? So we have to be concentrated yeah, on their strength. What can they do? Yeah? What are they able to, to do? Yeah? And use that yeah, as a start, yeah? Uh, let's say to look, modify, and change your exercise. Yeah? When we take, the, take this into, into the account, yeah, the, so the strength, uh, let's say, of a person, what he can do, yeah? for this, yeah, we also can create for him a safe environment yeah, because he feels confident and he feels supported. Yeah, and he feels that, okay, the exercise that is uh, presented here, well, they modified it so I can take part in it. I also can do I'm also able to do it. Yeah? So this is also something uh, yeah, we need to take into account. Yeah? Provide multiple ways to achieve a goal, offer diverse possibilities. Yeah? There are different ways to learn. Yeah? There are different ways to experience um, games, yeah, fun things, yeah, uh, to reach a result, yeah. Allow this also to players, yeah. The players, the young people who are in your group, yeah. Allow them that they sometimes do something different, yeah, because there are different possibilities to achieve something, yeah. When you do this, yeah, um, it's important, yeah, because people who are involved are much more involved, eh? much more engaged, yeah? and they get much more satisfaction out of it. Yeah? If you really block people, no, this you cannot do. Yeah? This you only can do eh? in this kind of way, then it will never work. Yeah? It will never work, yeah? uh, and it will be yeah, sometimes very difficult. Yeah? It doesn't mean that we have to make an exercise or a game very simple. Yeah? Sometimes it can be very challenging. It can be challenging, it can be complex. Yeah? It can be that there are different uh, ways to reach a certain point, for example, in a role play exercise that you would like to modify or to change or to develop. Yeah? Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah? Um, don't be afraid of it. Yeah? Let people experience lets people uh, do their thing yeah even if it even if you haven't foreseen it yeah just let it go let people uh, try uh, an experience yeah. offer activities in smaller or in bigger groups yeah um in youth organizations uh, when youth activities uh, on camps um every group is different yeah, and um, well, you have advantages and disadvantages to work in smaller groups, but also you have advantages and disadvantages to work in big groups. Yeah? Smaller groups yeah, with not so many people, well, the positive or, or yeah, the positive thing there is that, okay, in a smaller group as a person, yeah, it's very, or it's more difficult to hide yourself. Yeah, because you're only with five or six or 10. Yeah, so you're almost forced as a person also to have your input. Yeah, so people feel less isolated, yeah, misunderstood. Yeah, also people who are a little bit more introvert and they also can express themselves. Yeah, if you put them in a big group, yeah, they will get closed, yeah? they will uh, put themselves uh, behind, yeah, and they will not express themselves. Yeah, for example, in a small group. Well, there it's more relaxed, more comfortable, yeah, uh, and people feel less uh, isolated, yeah, uh, so they can participate, yeah. On the other hand, for example, sometimes it's also uh, good when you organize an activity to do it in a big group, yeah. Bigger groups, yeah, provide more perspectives uh, for expressing different ideas. Yeah? People can, um, let's say, uh, practice, yeah, with debating, expressing themselves, uh, putting ideas forward. Yeah, so it also gives more opportunities yeah? uh, for people to practice communication and collaboration skills, for example. Yeah, so it's always yeah a mix. 
Yeah, a mix. Uh, and depending what you would like to reach with your exercise, with your game, yeah, um, you have to choose bigger groups, smaller groups. Um, sometimes it's even interesting that you start in small groups and that through the exercise you build it up. Eh? First, you start with two. Then you come together, two groups together and share. Then you have two groups of uh, four. So you have eight groups. Uh, you have a group of eight. Yeah. And then you really can see yeah, that even those who were first a little bit shy, a little bit introvert yeah, within uh, and only talking just with your neighbor, that all yeah, at the finally they also end up, yeah, let's say, to express their feeling in the big group. Yeah. And when you afterwards ask them feedback, yeah, then you in a lot of cases, or at least I heard in a lot of cases that they say, well, I overcome my fear to talk in a big group. Yeah. Uh, and that, yeah, that has challenged me. Yeah. And that uh, have put me in a more secure position. Yeah. And especially yeah, uh, when you have people, yeah, when somebody is in your group who has a special need yeah, for him or her, that can be already a challenge. Yeah. Keep instructions simple. Yeah. Um, as youth workers, yeah, we always tend, yeah, to um, to make very nice, sometimes very cool, also big and complicated uh, exercises, games, role plays, uh, etc. Yeah. And to read something, yeah, there is a lot of explanation. Yeah. But here we say. Try, eh, when you explain something, try to keep instructions as simple as possible. Yeah. Um, and when you have a big uh, exercise, eh, a big game, break it down. Break it down in steps. Yeah. And step by step, give clear instructions. Yeah. Let people experiment, get to, then go to the next step. Yeah. Uh, also allow flexibility. Yeah. Which means that, yeah. Sometimes during your exercise, uh, rules can be changed. Yeah? Rules can be modified. Sometimes it's on purpose. Yeah, sometimes it's on purpose. Sometimes it's by accident yeah? because you see that things are which are going on in the group yeah? are not uh, going so smoothly and that you there on the spot have to change something. But don't be afraid of that. Yeah. Here important is, of course, also keep uh, in mind the physical and cognitive abilities of the people who are in your group. Yeah? If you work, for example, with a mixed group and somebody uh, is in your group who has a little bit, uh, let's say, cognitive, uh, not so strong. Yeah, uh, yeah sometimes um, when you knew this before, eh, you can... Uh, uh, change uh, a little bit of the instructions in a in a in a more uh, understandable way, especially for that person. Yeah. Okay. It gives you uh, a little bit more work beforehand. Yeah. But in the meantime, yeah, uh, you take into account uh, also that person. Yeah. And um, and you will see, especially in a mixed groups, yeah, that it's also appreciated not only by the person itself and uh, that he can follow, that he can play, but also by the others. Yeah. Who don't have uh, this cognitive uh, or cognitive strong. Yeah. Uh, that even there, uh, um, they know. Okay. Uh, the exercise that we did did is for everybody here of us. Give space to try instead of only explaining. Yeah, this has to do with, um, as a youth worker, yeah, sometimes you um, set up an exercise, you develop a game, you write it very down, uh, um, you write it out very nicely, yeah, but it's still a bit superficial, yeah, because you, yeah, if especially when it's something new. Yeah, uh, it's always if you have the chance, yeah, to play, to run it before, just to practice, to practice, to say, yeah, to see if what I wrote, what I developed with my group, does it work? Yeah, uh, especially for example, when you um, want to achieve certain objectives. Yeah, uh, with your exercise, uh, like an, an exercise when you work around uh, group dynamics, uh, you would like to put the group in a stress moment, yeah, um, that you can figure out, is it work? 
Yeah, does it work? Uh, do we get out what we want? Yeah, are people not too ejaculated? Yeah, uh, can uh, is the is is the exercise they they have to do? Uh, is it achievable? Yeah, or is it completely unrealistic? Yeah. Because also, eh, if you notice, for example, eh, that you play a game and the persons and eh, the group cannot reach the result, yeah, that can cause some friction, frustration. Yeah? And that is not what we would like to reach. Yeah? When we do an, an, uh, an exercise, eh, when we would like to reach something, a certain point eh, that we could would like to use as an entrance for discussion, for brief, debriefing questions, yeah, that we would uh, that we like to see and that can people reach that point. Yeah. Change the rules if needed, but maintain the integrity of the task. And that was what I was saying just also uh, a few minutes ago. Don't be afraid sometimes to change your rules during the exercise. Yeah, uh, It can be fun. Yeah? It can sometimes also cause a little bit of friction. Yeah, but you do this sometimes on purpose yeah, to bring the group into a new situation and to see, observe how they will handle with it. Yeah, but don't do it too often. Yeah, and especially depending who you have in group. Yeah, for example, if you have people, if one of your young youngsters. Uh, has uh, a special need on the framework of of, of uh, uh, the um, autistic spectrum. Yeah. Well, if you have such a person in your group and you're going to make a lot of changes during your exercise, well, for those people, that can be very stressful. Yeah. Uh, and they can really block on that certain point. Yeah. So if you knew this beforehand, yeah, then you also can take to uh, take uh, this into account. Yeah, with separate instructions for that person so that at least he can stay be safe. Or sometimes eh, when the changes are very small, eh, it's also for that person a challenge to overcome yeah, and to learn out of it. Yeah. But don't be afraid of it. Yeah. Don't say, okay, I have a person eh, who has a um, uh, an autistic uh, spectrum in it. So we stick to every step. Yeah, it depends. Right? It depends, uh, but just take to into account. Don't make your exercises, your games too easy. Yeah, that's also one of it. Yeah, we tend uh, to make exercises, games easy. Yeah, sometimes when we knew that we have people with limitations within our group. Yeah, but don't make it too easy. Yeah, people are smart enough. People are capable enough to do a lot of things. And it doesn't matter if you have a disability, eh, if you have a special need or not. Yeah? In this case, I always say we are all the same. Eh? We are all the same. Yeah. Okay, somebody has a disability, yeah, a special need because he cannot see, eh, because he's visually impaired. But basically that doesn't matter. Eh? Uh, why is it important? Yeah, If you make things too easy yeah, for the group, people can start to be bored very quickly. Yeah, and when it's too boring, people step out, people go and sit next to the, uh, to the side. Yeah, they don't want to play anymore. Yeah, and then also you lose interest yeah, from them uh, and their motivation. Yeah, and that is something which we don't want to have. Don't rely only and too much on personal assistance. And nowadays, yeah, also in our training course um, that we did in the past, we saw uh, when you have a person with a special need, and now there are budgets uh, from the government, local government, national government, that people can make use of personal assistance. Yeah, um, And when they come to activities of us, uh, they also bring their personal system with them. Yeah, But don't count on it too much for yourself Yeah, when you do an activity. Personal assistance, or there for the person to help him, yeah, um, when he needs to do something, yeah, sometimes very easy, eh? going to the toilet, hygienic, helping with food. But in an exercise, yeah, uh, well, don't count on it, eh? don't count only to help him. No, let the person eh, do it themselves, yeah, and include the person and the personal decent also yeah but he's not there to support the entire group 
And the personal assistant is only there for the person he wants to, he, uh, he is going to assist, huh? he's assisting. Yeah, That's his personal assistant. Yeah. Safety. Yeah, this is one of the most important things, I think. Yeah. Safety is and stays very important in every group. Yeah, but especially when you have uh, young people within your group with special needs, yeah, then you really for sure have to take to, uh, this into account. Yeah, um, people who are visually impaired, yeah, don't do things uh, work, uh, when you leave people alone and they can run uh, into a wall, hurt themselves, etc. Yeah, um, people in wheelchairs, yeah. Uh, yeah, just go and don't do uh, special uh, exercises uh, when you have to climb, eh? because, okay, that is not possible anyway. Yeah. Um, so here we really have to think about what is uh, or what can be offensive yeah, for people, what is in, uh, inappropriate yeah? um, in order or exercise, because maybe, yeah, then we they have to think, okay, maybe this part we have to leave out, yeah? or maybe for this part, we have to find another solution, yeah, another technique, yeah. Uh, but it also goes about uh, cognitive and uh, impairments. Yeah? When people are very anxious, yeah, when you know that young people are very anxious because they expressed it before, and also take these two into account, yeah, uh, because we don't want that people yeah, um, come into a very stressy situation, yeah, where things can go wrong. Yeah, so it also has to do with materials. Some materials, yeah, um, can hurt, yeah, especially if you work with young people, yeah, be very careful with it, yeah, and if you know that you have dangerous materials or that can cause uh, uh, physical pain or etc., find solutions change it, leave it out, modify your exercise, modify your games, eh? use something different. Yeah. So at least eh, that everybody, eh, so you don't lose the integrity of the exercise. Yeah. But still everybody has fun to play yeah, and to do it. Change the space and setting for a variety of stimulation. Yeah. This is something uh, that we also are learning here in Belgium yeah, to uh, in youth worker trainings. Yeah. Um, when we play an exercise, when we play a game, yeah, uh, sometimes, and that's not only, not only for uh, people with special needs, eh, but for youth work as such, sometimes by changing environment yeah, and doing an exact same exercise can change the whole concept. For example, yeah, if you have a play, yeah, an exercise that you play outside, yeah, in the forest, in trees, but you cannot do it, yeah, or you think about it, but there is a disability and there is somebody with a wheelchair, which is very uh, uh, challenging or very impossible. Uh, and let's say sometimes by moving the exercise instead of doing it um, in the forest between trees, you bring it into yeah, the setting into your uh, youth club, yeah, so into uh, into a big room, can change everything. Yeah. And that is something uh, very nice to experiment with it. Yeah, for yourself yeah, to challenge yourself. Okay, this is something we uh, uh, we never did yeah, because we always do it. For example, yeah, we do it uh, inside. Now we're going to do it outside in the field yeah, or on the beach, yeah? and that already changed a lot of uh, perspectives. Yeah, there are some uh, examples uh, written down here. Yeah? Uh, tie people up uh, to each other with a rope so that everybody is connected. Yeah, and you are with ten people connected to each other and do a small exercise, yeah. Uh, use blindfolds, yeah? for example, I know I did in the past yeah, when somebody was uh, in my group, um, had a bit uh, problems with uh, with his vision, yeah. Uh, then sometimes it is, uh, well, it's challenging yeah, to put the whole group in the same situation, yeah, because then the person who is visually impaired, more or less is more in advantage, in an advantage position than all the others. Yeah, because the others and eh, the other people are not used to it. Yeah, and then 
And this is something you also, for example, can use as an entrance to start up discussions afterwards and where you say, okay, I never realized that it's so difficult sometimes when I cannot see because I'm always um, looking for myself or always counting on what I see in front of me and I can handle on it. Yeah, But by putting away my vision uh, with a blindfold, I have at a certain point, I have to completely use different senses, I, my fingers, uh, my feelings, uh, tasting, uh, etc. And that can be very, very uh, challenging. Uh, that's why we say sometimes change, uh, change something to something very uh, completely different because it stimulates. Use your imagination here, we always say. Don't make it too fast or too slow. Yeah. Um, if you have a very big group huh, with a lot of uh, people with a disability huh, or a special need, huh, sometimes we make a game very slow. Yeah. Uh, or sometimes very fast. Yeah. He, here, this is something you have to look at it and huh? look at it um, to see uh, how mobile our people are. Yeah. Uh, do they need help? Uh, do you work? Have to work in couples? Yeah. Uh, sometimes. Yeah. It's uh, interesting. Yeah. To make your uh, exercise a bit slower, that you give more space. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it all work also works in the opposite. Yeah. Uh, when you put your uh, game uh, a little bit faster. Yeah, uh, because people are uh, uh, always uh, uh, that you experience that it's always slower. Yeah, um, and then you can see, uh, can see what is going on the group. Yeah, you even can put uh, different elements. Uh, part slow, part fast. Yeah, uh, and you always see. Yeah, especially when you have individual tasks or in couples, for example, there is always a group quicker than the other. Yeah, and don't be afraid of it. Yeah, some people need more time. Yeah, but that's also not a shame. Yeah, and it's also not a shame that the ones who are quicker just have to wait a bit. Yeah, you can have a talk with them. You can ask to observe the others. Yeah, um, you can yeah ask them uh, to write some notes. Yeah, how they experienced it because they are much quicker than the others, uh, and this kind of in a relationship. Yeah. Um, with maybe uh, what is going on in your group. Yeah. Equipment, yeah, something about that. Don't push them to use the same materials. Yeah, give options. Yeah, that has to do with, um, sometimes it is to bring new materials into a game. Yeah? Instead of using a big ball, yeah? football, for example, take it away and make it a small ping pong ball. Yeah, that completely changed the opposite. Yeah. Now we also have these huge big balls. Yeah. Uh, I remember once I did an exercise uh, outside, and uh, we had this. Um, it was not a, a football, but it was like a ball of two meters in diameter. Yeah. Which is huge. Yeah. But then changing. Yeah. And bringing in this material. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or these big balloons that you have from one or two meters and uh, that you also can use, which is very soft material and you cannot hurt. But when you do an exercise in a small room and a sm uh, environment, it changes everything. Yeah. Uh, and that's also yeah something uh, very challenging. Uh, for example, um, within the... Um, Within the sports uh, of visually impaired, there is this, um, I don't know, it's in English, it's this um, kind of wide ball with bells inside. Yeah. Uh, so you can play, yeah, and you can do it together with somebody who's blind because they can hear it. Yeah. And if you then put yourself, uh, you say extra material and you put all the people a blindfold on it, then you all go through the same experience. Yeah. So change in equipment. For example, yeah, that's also uh, very small little tricks, uh, let's say, uh, to change, to modify an exercise. Yeah. Involve the target group in decision making. Yeah. Um, sometimes it is good yeah, when you develop uh, a game yeah, or, uh, or an exercise yeah, um, to ask 
people from the target group and from the person with the disability to check, okay, is this what we would like to do? Is this a good idea? Do you feel comfortable? Would you like to try it? Yeah. Are you not afraid of it? Yeah. By going into the discussion yeah, uh, and involving them when you develop uh, your exercise, your game, yeah, that can give, can give you a lot of energy also yeah, to change yeah, and also to try. Yeah. Uh, and don't forget about the needs of participants without disabilities. Yeah, this is something that as a youth worker, yeah, especially with, when you would like to work uh, and set up exercises with people with uh, special needs that we forget. Yeah, We forget uh, because we're too focused or we are focused yeah, on uh, including yeah, the persons with disabilities. Yeah. But the game and exercise should be accessible for everybody. Yeah. Also for those who are there without disabilities. Yeah. And I think this is something important, but that yeah, for me, that makes um, an exercise um, really inclusive. Yeah. Inclusive meaning we all do it together. Yeah. You, me, yeah, the person who's sitting in a wheelchair, um, the person who is deaf and need uh, sign language uh, um, uh, interpretation. Yeah, uh, it should be fun for everybody. Yeah, also for the ones without a disability. Yeah, never forget this. And never forget uh, when you work in a mixed group. Yeah, that also for them it should be fun. Yeah, that doesn't mean yeah that all the other things that we have uh, that have been saying here yeah uh, that you don't have to forget eh? because we would like to include them eh? we would like to give also the chance eh, uh, to do to the one with a special need that is also included that he also feels comfortable that he also also feels fine yeah uh, and that he yeah that he also feels part of the group yeah and then the last one yeah, the really last one is don't forget, it's just an exercise. It's just an exercise. It's a game. It's for fun that we play. Yeah. And sometimes you do something and it don't turn out. It doesn't work at all. Yeah. Uh, but that's also okay in the meaning of meaning. If something, yeah, that you have been working on it and it turns out, yeah, that it's a mistake. Yeah, don't be afraid of it. Yeah, learn out of it, talk about it, ask feedback to participants, ask to feedback to your young persons, ask feedback sometimes directly. Okay, you in your wheelchair, was it for you also good? Eh? Did you also, uh, could you also express yourself? Eh? Could you also uh, play uh, the game? Eh? Uh, and sometimes I ask, okay, if it doesn't work, what can we do better? How do we have to change it? Eh? Because, okay, you're the first one which uh, uh, I'm playing this exercise, but how can we, uh, do we need to change something for our next work and uh, for our next uh, uh, youth exchange? Yeah. Uh, so don't be afraid of that. Eh? Use the power. I always say, use the power of the group. Use the power also of the individuals um that you have there uh just also to yeah to check it out yeah um it's an uh how do you say it's a path eh? it's a learning path yeah to take this into account eh? take in account working with groups eh? when you have young people with special needs inside yeah um and it's learning learning by doing and eh? learning by doing experiential learning um, grow yourself grow yourself as a youth worker yeah um, and sometimes that goes with ups and downs making mistakes cheering um, good uh, exercises laughing uh, etc all right are there any questions remarks or experience would like to share.
and that's a question to you. Was it clear? Did you experience already? Did you already develop uh, games uh, yourself? I see Rosanna saying, no, no, I never did it. Yeah. Um, the first time it can be scary. Yeah, the first time it can be scary. Um, but I always say, don't be afraid of it. Yeah, don't be afraid of it. Yeah. And sometimes also ask help, eh? ask help if you know somebody from your organization that did it once. Eh? That doesn't mean that that person also have to be there, Yeah, but you can go and sit together, talk about, share experiences. Yeah, that's already something uh, sometimes that can help. Yeah, And then, of course, it's always uh, yeah the test, eh? the test to do it yourself, eh? maybe together, eh? uh, that you're with two or with three. Yeah, and then just look. Yeah, just look see and learn out of it okay anybody else would like to share something actually i would like to just share an impression because uh, it was super clear everything so i don't have questions but uh -huh. um, it was uh, really nice to see how um the challenge is also for us the fact of uh, Putting into the game, into the game, to the uh, in Spanish we say the game, but it's not uh, the same. Into the situation, mm -hmm. uh, different sensors, also our sensors. Yeah. So okay, we are used to use this behavior in order to uh, develop an activity, but mm -hmm. we can use another behavior in which we are going to take the information from other sensors. Yeah. So it's it's also challenging for for us. Mm -hmm. And it gives us the same level of the same level or uh, the capacity of empathy uh, yeah. to feel what the other person can feel if uh, uh, using another sense, using another way of, uh, of developing the, the activity. Yeah. So it, yeah. Was, it was really, really nice to see that reflected on the presentation. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, sometimes I always say to people that um, because you, youth workers, yeah, I don't know it's in, in the other countries, but sometimes in Belgium, eh, you have youth workers, they say, okay, uh, I develop an exercise, exercise, I will do a game with the group. Yeah, They present the exercise, they present the game, and then they say, okay, now we will start and you play. And they stand next to, yeah, and they just watch and look. Yeah, And then I say, okay, basically you as a youth worker, yeah, also play, do it yourself put yourself together with the group yeah because then you also learn directly uh, you also have the fun yeah? the fun that 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 the group experience you also have it but you also learn directly out of it yeah because then sometimes you even can notice that it's not working yeah uh, that you have to change to modify yeah and sometimes it's uh, yeah it gives you the right feeling saying okay this is fun this is nice I'm on the right track, and the group appreciates also uh, what we have been doing together. Yeah, I noticed something. This is something also very cultural. Yeah, cultural defined because the older you get, yeah, some people say, oh, "I'm too old to play." Yeah, I will give instructions. Yeah, and I will explain what they have to do, but I'm too old to play. Yeah, I'm always saying that. Yeah, playing is 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 an ability, a skill. Yeah, that sometimes Seb, when you're growing up, you're losing. Yeah, um, and to find this back, yeah, uh, is also yeah a great advantage I think for you as a youth worker. Yeah. Uh, even if you work with kids, smaller kids, adults, teenagers, yeah. Uh, but sometimes, yeah, on meetings with all youth workers, we play exercises. Yeah, uh, so as an adult playing okay it's different yeah? sometimes you you call it in a different way yeah you say okay it's an exercise it's not a game sometimes it's just how you explain something to the group yeah uh, that makes a difference elif you want to say something yeah just to add um, that it is um it's a continuous process this <laughs> adaptation so um you have to we have to adapt every time we have a different group so i always say that um imagine a group if you change only one person uh, with a with a special in that group 
the techniques, all the methodology should be revised again. So it's yeah. like um, at the beginning, as you said, maybe <clears throat> hard to mm -hmm. adjust, but it gets easier and easier on time because uh, you uh, you learn how to first get the information, necessary information that you need to adapt. And you we learn uh, not to assume that mm -hmm. uh, all, let's say, all the wheelchair users have the same needs all the uh, deaf uh, participants will be the same in terms of participating or learning. So it depends on the individual itself. So as much as we learn how to get the proper information, then it gets easier to, to adapt everything accordingly. And uh, lastly, um, it's a good technique. What we do is uh, to simulate in our minds the beginning mm -hmm. to the end of the game imagining uh, the group as a whole as you uh, told not only the ones with disabilities but also everyone uh, so step by step uh, what shall i change what shall i add um, as material as the space as the uh, rules or the speed the pace whatever is needed so it comes like a puzzle pieces mm -hmm. uh, drops and um, and you have a, a big picture of the game, but still there is a lot of room for the mistakes. So whether, however you simulate uh, as much as possible, you still make mistakes and that's okay. And that's the big part of learning also as a facilitator. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why testing and doing with your team and also with with the youngsters themselves is um, is also very uh, important. Okay, thank you very much, Elif. Uh, and exactly what you're saying, eh? it's a uh, yeah. When somebody comes in new, eh, you always have to check, always have to revise. Yeah, uh, and indeed, it's good that sometimes in your mind eh, that you go over the exercise, the game that you would like to do to see if it will work, but it also gives you more preparation for yourself as as, as soon as you're then in front of the group, uh, that you don't have to read everything from the paper, but that you're, yeah, show a little bit that, uh, how to say, that you feel comfortable with it. Yeah, and also sometimes the way you present it, uh, if you're comfortable and you say it, even that is already a sign for people, yeah, to, put themselves uh, in full confidence to try uh, because they know, okay, uh, the youth worker, uh, the facilitator, he knows what he's doing. He has been working on it. Uh, and he knows, okay, if something goes wrong, that he can deal with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's somebody else who would like to share something, an experience or a comment. No. Okay, um, then I would like to thank you. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you for uh, sharing. Yeah, uh, also to introduce you in uh, in the beginning. Yeah, um, and hopefully, yeah, you got uh, out something out of it. Yeah, um, we will send you later the link. Yeah, uh, and some material also, uh, the presentation, for example, that we will also send to you. Yeah, so uh, on um, quite a time, yeah, when you would like to recap, yeah, you can go over it, read it. And whenever you have questions, you always can uh, ask me or send me an email. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. And I wish you a very nice and a pleasant day further on this Wednesday. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.